Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, today we're going to talk about if we should add a kind of a notification like a V1, V2 to the top of our scripts. It's awesome, man. Let's do it. Hey, so it's Jackie here from Denmark together with Joe Glines from Dallas, Texas. Yeah. And hey, guys, so today we were going to talk about should we add some kind of marker if it's a V2, V1, whatever version of AutoHotKey are we using or whatever version of AutoHotKey is this uh, piece of code meant for? Yeah, let's get going. Yeah, and Jackie, let's, let's add to that because initially we were talking about V1, V2, which is really important. We'll get into that. But perhaps there's a couple other things we should add too, like, you know, the bitness that, you know, it was developed on and maybe the, what it was tested with, the version of Windows it was tested on. Like, I think those those things, there's probably a, a 8 million other things that people might throw out there, but I don't know. Do you agree those would be, the, if anything, those would be the key things we'd have in there as well? Yeah, I, I've seen a few different types of these. I don't know what to actually call them. I, I, I'd like to call them headers, but I don't know uh, exactly what you call them. But I've seen them over the years where um, an author of specific libraries or scripts would have um, a beginning type block that would tell you a good amount of information about the script in question. Uh, I've liked those a lot because they make it very simple to know who wrote it, when did it write, write it, what version is it, uh, is there any dependencies, Stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, starting off, getting back to the whole V1, V2. Now, this, of course, is because we just did a webinar on it last month. Of V2 is now in its beta version. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and which means now it's not going to change, not nearly as much as it used to. It'll still change, but not nearly like it was before. Um, and so, more and more people are starting to look at it and program in it. But, um, and let me start off here because so. For me, and I know you and I were around the same times, but um, I think you were a bit before me looking at the forum. I started, when I actually started doing dot notation type stuff, before it was, when I started with hot, auto hotkey, it was hot strings and hot keys for about three years. And then I switched to starting to do um, web scraping. And that's when I started looking at the forum. And at the time, we were right in the middle of doing the vanilla and V1 launch and it was not at all in any way clear what, you know, scripts were published in what versions. And at the time, I didn't even know there was a thing of V1 or V2 or, or sorry, um, vanilla versus V1. And it was really, really confusing. And so that was what to me was like, hey, you know, should we add something now to help avoid this confusion, right? Especially before there's too many V2 versions out, scripts out there. Yeah, I, I know that there was quite an amount of um, um, whatever you call that. It wasn't very clear because you had a um, forum administrator who might have uh, wanted his own agenda or their own agenda or whatever. And that kind of muddied the waters a bit. So uh, because you didn't get these clear sub forums or f f subway ways to actually differentiate what you were working on, we're currently with the administration of the Arhatki forum. That part of it might be more clear, but in other more general areas where people are asking for help or sharing their scripts or just in general are new to programming and stuff like that. If they don't traverse the AutoHotKey forum, but come in from somewhere else, um, it might be on GitHub, it might be on uh, whoever, uh, what's they all called? There's lots of sites out there and they might come in directly from Google and stuff like that. And if it's not in the code, you know, in the actual code snippet, in the library top, whatever, where you can put it, it will get lost because people will come in, they'll see, oh, this is probably what I need. 
they'll grab it and they'll try to run it and it will fail or it will they won't if they're running v2 code in v1 they'll probably get some errors that they can solve as new users and in v2 it's probably the same because v2 isn't actually backwards compatible so let, let me clarify something what well, something just said jackie because i think you, it's a really really good point um, i'm just going to summarize it when i would be looking for a solution i'm going to google google doesn't drop me at the parent page and say hey everything under this is v2 or v1 right it drops you right into the page where the script is and i go get that and that's where you're like i'm not going to realize that actually the parent thread says v2 but you know it's a subtle thing that if you're new to this stuff you're not going to notice that a lot right so it's easy to yeah learn. but the parent thread might not even say it if it's a sub forum yes. on on wherever it it's give it's 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 a pre request or whatever you call that it's a given that all that's in here is for v2 um, but then you actually need to catch it in the breadcrumbs or whatever it's called um, so you can actually see that oh oh i'm in a sub form oh v2 okay and ask for help fair enough so all of the results in here are for v2 if that's not clear we'll we'll keep having these issues and as most scripting and programming languages that have made major version changes or steps um, it's always hard to transition from one to the other because you have an enormous amount of people who know what they have not what they're getting and an enormous resource base that's just it's all around it's in this side and that side and that chat and that forum and this forum and forums in other languages and it's just everywhere for one specific version and i believe that version one compared to vanilla was actually more compatible those two were closer to each other so most vanilla scripts would be runnable on version one whereas that's not going to be the case with version two mm -hmm. so that's to me that's that's truly not backwards compatible and that might make the switch even harder right yeah and, and to back up because when i was just to, to complain right to whine when i was doing that stuff i was trying to use calm with ie and that was where, boy, you talk about a difference between vanilla, you know, and V1. Com is what, I mean, that was the really, really big change, right? That they they embedded com into it and the syntax for it was just drastically, which was actually a good thing because it made it, even though I didn't know what I was doing, I could easily tell like this, this is clearly something different, <laughs> you know, like I like this one much better than that one. It took me a while, but um, it was very easy to tell. With V2 and V1, it's, I don't think it's going to be, especially if you're a noob, as easy to tell. Um, and even then, like you said, there, there's a lot of things that are going to break, and it's just not going to be that clear of why they're breaking, because um, that syntax is just different. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's there's going to be some hard um, things to learn there, where people might, if they stay around long enough, be able to see it pretty quickly and um, there were uh, some very good ways of seeing version one versus uh, vanilla back in the day but only if the scripts were advanced enough otherwise it didn't really matter so um, i'm unsure if a lot of the oh, the version one scripts are gonna run without issue on version two. Totally agree. Um, Which is also why- For a long time. Oh, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Oh. Yeah, for a long time at least, um, version two has been moving away from a lot of the ways that version one is doing it. Yeah, um, what I was gonna say was, so at the beginning of this podcast, we talked 
you know, quite a bit about just mainly the forum, right? But what I was just thinking about, and, and there's, you know, Stack Overflow, Reddit, other places where um, on the forum, because we know Tank, and Tank is the main admin on it, he could hopefully go through and automate doing this on a bunch of the stuff that's already there. Maybe that would be a great way to get started. However, being selfish, I was here just thinking about my own scripts, right? And like right now, because I have yet to write, even though we did the webinar, I haven't actually programmed myself in version two yet. I've just been, you know, looking at stuff, but I haven't written programs in it. I should go through right now and write an auto hotkey script to go through every one of my scripts and add the V1 at the top of it, right? It'd be so easy for me to do now because once I start dabbling and they get mixed, how in the world am I going to keep track of which ones I write in, you know, uh, unless I do kind of like the forum and create whole different directories or store them differently, it's it's going to be, you know, I don't want to say a nightmare, but really problematic. Yeah, and, and that's that's probably going to be one of the things with uh, out of Hotkey version 2, at least from what I know right now, is keeping the AHK um, extension. Um, right. Meaning that you won't be able to differentiate them there. So as soon as you try to start any script you have on your PC, uh, if you have version two installed, that's when it's going to try to use to run it and you'll get the error. Whereas if version two was using a different extension, not that I have a good idea as to which one it should be, um, then you might be able to remove a bit of that because then you could keep your version one scripts as they've always been. And then for version two, have uh, totally different uh, scripts with another extension, allowing you to differentiate them there. You will still have the issue where code has been posted because you can't see the extension per se, um, but on local computers. I know you can do it yourself, but to me, it might be something of interest for version two to actually do. Especially most people aren't ready to go into the registry and and do that you know i mean there's a lot of people that are geeky don't get me wrong but the average person's not ready to be dictating that in their editors but of course we're still waiting for editors for version two as well as, as far as i know um so yeah there's there's still work to be done but that's why i thought let's get on this ahead of time now before we really start making the big switch and not i don't want to say be blindsided because i'm sure some people were talking about the vanilla versus v1 switch right and um, I'd just rather be a little more proactive than, and not have other people go through the experience I had, which sucked. Yeah, I think the, the vanilla versus V1 change was uh, another type of change from this one. This one will probably be more organized. I think that uh, Chris, the original creator of Out Hotkey, um, uh, had vanilla and probably had pulled uh, the brakes a bit on working on it. And other people had came in with great additions to the language, as Lexicos did with version one, um, originally called L for Lexicos. Um, and it slowly gained traction for the advanced things that it was capable of doing. And therefore, the amount of users actually recommending that, pointing new users to that, um, came naturally. And in the end, the community chose to make the switch and called it version one or the main version. And I think the version two, I'm not sure how it will work. If it will for years and years be a fully free option, you can choose whichever one you like because version two is still in beta and with how many years it was in alpha, who's to say how quickly it will move up to actually being a finished language and will enough people adopt it while it's in beta for the community as a whole to kind of start pushing version two. And 
that's that's where one of my uh, uh, uncertainties are because I haven't looked into version two enough to see the light, so to speak. I haven't seen much of what version two is doing for me compared to one. Um, I know that it has a lot of cleanup in the syntax and in some of these things. And in the back end, it's built to uh, be much more, I'm not sure if it's prototypey or whatever it is, but it's at least built in a different way than the original, which should allow for even more advanced stuff. Cool, yeah, and for me, there, there were little things that I noticed. I mean, in principle, hey, quote unquote, I'm gonna say quote unquote, because from the webinar, actually, Jackie, correct me if I'm wrong here, because this is where I got a little confused. In the webinar, we were talking about, hey, everything's a function. And then at some point, I forget if it was Dimitri or Geek Dude, someone said, oh, but loops aren't functions. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> Wait a minute. So everything's a function, but loops aren't functions. So therefore, everything is not a function. Um, I'm, I'm confused. Am I correct in saying that, that if loops are still commands and they're not functions, then how do you say everything's a function? I, that question is still too... Um... Uh, I, I would like to say it because loop is a flow control thing um, and, and therefore isn't the function. Uh, and, and there's a few of those. Uh, if is probably not a function, it's also a flow control thingy. And therefore there will be stuff in the language that are not functions because it has uh, the functionality um, and therefore you can't uh, call it a function, but it might still have scope. Uh -huh. I'm not sure. Well, I, I believe that's what Geek Dude replied in the webinar saying something about he understands why they didn't make that a function because of the complexities of scope around a loop. Thing. So he said something about that. And I'm like, okay, this is you know over my head, but it just irked me. But okay, so if there's, some other, and we'll, we'll call them flow control for lack of better term, because there's directives, right? And then there's, you know, there used to be commands and functions, but the, so what you're saying is they're just a different category and that's why it's okay to say they're not functions because it's, it's not a, it's not a command either. It's a flow control thing. So, okay. That, that makes me feel better. Cause I'm like, well, wait a minute. I thought everything was a function. Um, but I love the idea of, quote unquote, everything being the function because the commands to me, I just, I, I would just, I would almost wish we could just make, add some more commands to V1 and I'd be good to go, I think personally. Uh, but I know there is in the webinar, we talked about the bigger picture of the stuff in V2 that's kind of directly, you and I aren't gonna necessarily benefit from it, but because it tightens up the language, maybe less people will make fun of us or fun of auto hotkey, right? Because it's a little, you know, a little more stricter on things. Um, yeah, and, I, I, and at some point, I've also read, I've not been a direct part of it, but I've still read topics and threads and stuff like that that were about some of the limitations of one, uh, stuff that Lexicos has run into that he simply wasn't, uh, able to uh, give us with one because of the base code. Um, like what? Multi-threading? Stuff like that, probably, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if that's one of the goals of two, but um, the way two is built is totally different from the way that one was built, thereby allowing um, a developer to actually do much more advanced stuff. And whatever that is, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head at least, um, but I know there have been different integrations with other languages, um, allowing you to run other types of code, interacting directly with JavaScript and, and browsers and stuff like that. That's not calm, but other ways of doing that 
um, and these interscript communication ways and stuff like that, from what I understand, two will have more possibilities when it comes to these integrations. Um, so yeah, just hopefully like that works. Are the are you just Sorry? to APIs that you know will be able to co connect to other program APIs or? Is it something else entirely? Yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it, but it's deeper than that. Okay. Um, it, it will be more uh, accessible and you will be able to build in it in a more modular way. So, so you're not blocked out of uh, different functionality. I was, I was thinking about this. I don't know where something you said made, made it trigger for me in my head. The difference between you and I, right? When it comes to program out of hotkey, you're, you're out of the NASCAR. You know what NASCAR is? The racers, right? Mm -hmm. You're you're in the pit crew. You're in there in the engine. You're tinkering in the stuff. I'm the driver, right? I don't care. I, hey, you fix what's under the hood, man. I just want to get going. Hey, does the, does it drive great? Great. That's all I care about. You know what I mean? I'm a very surface level stuff. I don't get into the guts of the things. And you're in the nitty gritty, doing you know actually with how it works. Right. But I'm like, that that's cool, but I don't need to know all that stuff. I just gotta know how to turn the steering wheel, you know, and, and hit the gas pedal. Um it's a weird yeah. analogy, but and then all the rest analogy. of the guys, they're they're the ones back at the office actually knowing how all of it works and I'm just the one putting it together. Who knows? Um but yeah, yeah, there there's a lot of levels to an analogy like that. Yeah. Yeah. And that and I'm saying none of them are right or wrong, right? It's just that's I've always been the if I find a function that works, I don't look inside it. I don't care, right? I'm just like, get it, you know, get it, use it. And, and you're digging in the weeds, looking at going how it works. And it's why you're a much better, you know, quote unquote mechanic or uh, programmer than I am. But uh, I'm like, it doesn't, you know, it's cool. Um, anyway, so a little off topic, but uh, hopefully if you guys have any thoughts on this, um, also comment if you, if you went through the vanilla to change to V1 um, and think about things that, you know, we, maybe we could do. There are, thankfully, you know, we know people on um, Reddit that definitely I think we could try to, you know, get some uh, the admins there. Uh, now, I don't know about Stack Overflow. Is that just the Wild West? Is there really like an admin on Stack Overflow, Jackie? Do you know? I don't think so. No, I don't think there's an admin per se, but there are Stack Overflow um, moderators that Okay. I don't think you need you, you won't get anything out of actually knowing them, but um, because I still think it's very much user based. So if you post something totally off limits, there are rules and they'll be enforced. So yeah, um, and Discord is another one where we know people there that we could get them to uh, apply some of this stuff. So um, anyway, if you guys have any other thoughts on this, it'd be awesome. Please chime in, uh, add on a comment here or there. Yeah, let us hear. Cheers.